Alaska Wilderness Perspective presents The Brown Bear Men. Big Game Guides, Brent Jones, Roger Morris, and Dan Swatzer. Hosted by biologist and outdoor producer, Wade Nolan. You are about to be guided into brown bear country by the best guide team in Alaska. With over 58 years of combined experience with the big bears, this team is on target. It's impossible to think about Alaska without thinking about brown bears. Brown bears are the very soul of the Alaskan wilderness. Across the last 17 years, I've really been blessed to be able to spend time with a number of groups of people who work with big bears. I've worked with researchers and biologists. I've worked with, uh, I've worked as a, as a wildlife photographer and I've worked with naturalists. I've worked with authors. And probably most importantly, I spent a lot of time with a special group of guys who are a guiding team in Alaska. They're called AAA Alaska Outfitters. That's Roger Morris, Brent Jones, and Dan Swatzer. I've been all over Alaska's mountain ranges with, these, with this guiding team, and it was through my association with them that I got to be really familiar with the brown bear men. The area we will be hunting brown bear in extends from Wide Bay on the Alaska Peninsula up to the snowy spine of the Alaska Range on the Dog Salmon River. We will also hunt the remote reaches of Cold Bay. Biologists recognize Alaska brown bears and grizzlies as one species. Coastal bears in southern Alaska are usually referred to as browns. Their larger size is mostly due to a diet of salmon. Interior bears are usually called grizzlies. They are a smaller version of the coastal browns. The confusion arose when the Boone and Crockett Club drew an arbitrary line across the southern one-third of Alaska and said that all bears below the line are browns and all those above are grizzlies. We're going to call them all browns. It is estimated that 98% of all the big bears in the U.S. live in Alaska. An estimated 40,000 brown bears roam wild in Alaska. The population is the most intensely managed species in the Great Land, and their numbers are healthy and stable. Fifty percent of the annual harvest comes from three coastal game management units. This is where the biggest bears are found. Consequently, these areas are intensely managed with a permit system. Most trophy bears are found either on the Alaska Peninsula, Kodiak Island, or southeastern Alaska. To reach the Alaska Peninsula hunting camps, which we will be hunting out of, 
you must first fly to King Salmon and there board a bush plane to fly to camp. We will base most of our hunting out of AAA's Wide Bay Base Camp, located only one quarter mile from the North Pacific Beach Line. The other camp we'll be hunting from is up in the beautiful valley of the Dog Salmon River. This permanent camp is the Hub Camp. Although you are in the wilderness, you can still enjoy hot showers, comfortable bunks, and telephone communication to your hometown. Forget the freeze-dried food. Bear camp is no place to diet. Brown bears range over a lot of country in the spring. In order to know where bears are concentrated, game surveys are flown prior to the opening of the season. The best way to score on a bear is to hunt one-on-one -on -one with a guide. Alaska state law mandates that all non-resident brown bear hunters be guided by a licensed guide. If you're hunting in Alaska, you'll spend some time in a bush plane. Cessna Super Cubs are the plane of choice. These souped-up two-seaters can take off and land on a football field, sometimes in half that distance with a stiff headwind. Cubs are used to shuttle hunters and guides in and out of spike camps. The 30-inch balloon tires allows the plane to land on a gravel bar covered with grapefruit-sized rocks. The bush pilots who fly with AAA are all extremely experienced in Alaska mountain flying. This bush pilot, Tony Lee, has thousands of hours logged driving a cub all over the bush. The Alaska Peninsula is covered up with bears. Each year, hunters spot bears right from their spike camp. Spring brown bear season opens in early May. The big boars are first out of the den, and they scour the beaches for winter kills. Some bears have been taken while feeding on dead whales that wash up on the beaches. Boars travel the extent of their range in order to find receptive sows to breed. Spending time next to traditional travel corridors and bottlenecks is a key element in maintaining a high success rate. During the spring hunt, you need to capitalize on the fact that boars are mobile. Mobile bears are visible, and visible bears are vulnerable. Knowing where to spot from is strategic for success. Patiently and thoroughly glassing the mountainsides is pivotal. As much as three-fourths of each day may be spent glassing from lookouts. Each day begins with a walk to a lookout. A typical day will include six to ten miles of walking between breakfast and dinner. Get in shape before you show up in a bear camp. It's not uncommon to pass on six or more bears before you find a trophy. Spring bear seasons are cold and bears usually remain unrubbed throughout the season. Guides will judge the size of bears for you. If you're from Texas or New Jersey, all brown bears will look huge. Fact is, some are just larger than others. You may get a chance to pass one up at close range. Be sure to bring a change of underwear. Bob DePellegrini is a hunter that's in from New Jersey. He's hunting out of the Wide Bay Base Camp. He's going to be hunting with Brent Jones. Let's watch as they encounter a big brownie about three miles south of camp. Brent Jones and Bob D. Pellegrini have a bear spotted. They move in downwind. Rather than risk a close-range stock in the dense alders, 
They opt for a 150-yard shot from a rest. Wait for him to walk out. Wait for him to get in that open spot. Wait for him to come out there. Okay, as soon as he turns broadside and stops, go ahead and take him. No. Okay, Bob, any time now. Congratulations, Bob. Thanks a lot, Brian. That's a nice bear. Look at those white ears. That is, he's a beauty. Hair? Thing must have four inches of hair on its back. Oh, yeah. He's That's a real nice one. Pretty life size mount. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That three mile walk was worth it now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've never seen so many bear, though. This place is really, really crawling with bear. When they say the peninsula is loaded with bear, they really mean it. It's the third one on this hillside. Oh, yeah. No. The other two were a little bit smaller. They're probably two and a half, three-year-olds. This one's about an eight and a half foot bear here. Probably a five-year-old, maybe a six-year-old bear. That's the most exciting hunt I was ever on. I've hunted quite a few animals, but this one here, boy, this really gets you going. Hunts vary from one to 14 days. Brent is a licensed taxidermist, and he and the AAA guide take care of trophies right at the base camp. We are hunting 45 miles south of Wide Bay in Chiganagic Bay. A big bear has been spotted in the alders. One of the hunters has brought a home video camera with him today. Let's watch what happens. Ron Mobley and guide Brent Hudson have the bear spotted in an alder thicket about 80 yards upwind. As they move in, they hope that the bear will stay put until they're in position. Like all stocks on the big bears, the wind demands all of your attention. Even bears in remote areas with no experience with man recognize man scent and avoid it. Many stocks have to be abandoned and replanned because of a wind shift. Many brown bears spend most of the daylight hours laid up in an alder thicket. This bear has been in the same basic location for over 10 hours. Once in position, things happen fast. Hit him again. Hit him, hit him, again. Hit him Ronnie. Hit him again. Hit him again. Keep putting hit. me. Hit him. Shoot to the brush, Ronnie. Ronnie. I don't say. That's good. I, I don't think he's going nowhere. Still alive. Shoot him again. We saw this bear at 7.30 this morning. It's now 5.30. Ten-hour stop. We killed it. Ronnie made a perfect shot right in the neck. They got us within 70 yards of the bear. This is Dow Dollar. I'm not a very good cameraman, but this is this an excitement you've never seen. Success rate on AAA's brown bear hunts are extremely high. Most hunters in this remote region of the Alaska Peninsula will see as many as 25 bears in a week. This photo is full of happy campers. It's early May on the Alaska Peninsula and the mountains are still locked in snow. It's on these snowy mountainsides that brown bears den. Bears den much higher than you would think. Actually, most dens are located at over 2,200 foot elevation. 
Arkansas hunter Dow Dollar is hunting out of this tent camp, which is located on the valley floor. The AAA guide spotted a lone bear along the margin of a lake. During this time of year, most lone bears are boars. Sows with cubs stay near the den for two to three weeks longer than boar bears. This bear is on a moose kill. It's hard to say if the bear killed the moose or if it's a winter kill, but regardless, this is a good bear and the guides and Dow Dollar decide to move in. At the last moment, the bear gets their scent and breaks for cover. Going up the hill. Behind him, Dad. Hit him again. Don't quit. Shoot. Shoot. Run it, shoot. Shoot. This, this wasn't walked up. Congratulations. Thank you, Tony. Thank you very much. This get wasn't walked up. Get some blood on you. Still on your teeth Look at me. Way to go, pard. Thank you very much, Brent. <laughs> Tony. Is that a happy bear hunter? <laughs> Little down dollar. Back to Russell, Arkansas, there's your bear, son. Hold up. First there. brown bear. <laughs> I'll be back in five years, same spot. Chicken Agic. Chicken Agic. Chicken Agic River and Chicken Agic Bay. Chicken Agic. We got Tony Jerkins and Brent Hutchins. With hunting partner Ronnie Moff. Triple-A guides Brent Hudson and Tony Jurgensen, along with Dow Dollar and his hunting partner, Ronnie Mobley, have pulled off one of the most challenging hunts in North America for the Alaska brown bear. I'm absolutely free. I think that's the end of the You look thrilled. I am thrilled. <laughs> Winters on the Alaska Peninsula are extremely harsh. Snow depths often exceed six feet on the ground, and moose are heavily stressed. Young calves with low body fat and bulls that have been injured or run down by the fall rut are the two most likely classes to succumb to the winter snows. After leaving the den in May, brown bears often roam the valley floors in search of winter kills. This mound of grass and brush is covering a thousand pound moose. Brown bears bury their kills to protect them from predators. This is what the bear was guarding when he was spotted. Most brown bear hunters use a rifle to hunt with, but a few step out and use a bow. Fall hunts are by far the best for a bow hunter. The key word is salmon. Bears spend most of the summer and fall adjacent to salmon streams. By far, the best way to encounter a brown bear at under 30 yards is when his attention is on food and not you. The current world record brown bear was taken by Dr. Jack Frost in 1985 on Unimac Island, Alaska, as it fed on a whale carcass. The number two P&Y bear was taken by the late Fred Bear in Wide Bay back in 1960. This wide bay area is an excellent area for bow hunting the big bears. Chuck Adams' big brown came from a wide bay drainage as well. Brent Jones was guiding Chuck when he managed to stalk to within 12 yards of the 1,400 pound monster. Triple A guides have guided nine successful bow hunters since 1989. All hunts were conducted without a single shot being fired. This next hunt is one you'll never forget once you watch it. It's a bow hunt for brown bear. The hunter is Archie Nesbitt. He's from Calgary, Alberta. Archie's not a newcomer to bow hunting. He's bow hunted all over the world. He's taken lots of record book animals. He's really good. I want you to watch this, and when you're watching it, imagine that you're Archie. Here it is in Archie's words. Wide Bay has produced some of the biggest bears in the Pope and Young record book. Fred Bear and Chuck Adams hunted there and took two great bears. Chuck hunted with AAA Alaska Outfitters and, and uh, Brent Jones, uh, who's a partner in AAA, 
guided uh, Chuck and, and they took a tremendous bear about two years before Brad Finch and I had the opportunity to hunt there. Brad was my guide and, and uh, we corresponded for two years before uh, I went on my hunt and uh, planned it uh, all the way down to uh, the final stock if we had the chance to, to, to have one. When I arrived at Wide Bay, the, uh, uh, the tent was set up on close to the beach and uh, there were bear tracks everywhere. Trails in front of the tent, trails behind the tent, trails that looked like steamrollers had, had uh, gone down the, the beach and through the grass. We hunted only five days. Uh, we saw bears every day. We saw about 10 bears and, and one hunter uh, just over the hill saw 43 bears on his short uh, few day hunt that year. Uh, day two we, we took a great uh, Boone and Crockett caribou and it was uh, uh, just a tremendous hunt, tremendous thrill getting him about four miles from camp. Uh, we planned this as, from, from the start as a bow hunt. Uh, I don't hunt with a, a rifle anymore and, and uh, uh, I communicated with Brad Finch and, and he uh, promised me that he'd, he'd give me a fair shot to, to take a bear with a bow as long as I didn't wound one. Uh, we knew we had to be within 30 yards or 40 yards. We knew it was one arrow. Uh, we knew it was a w one chance. Uh, wounded bears and, and, uh, and uh, are dangerous bears and, and they are attack bears. And the books are full of stories about bears uh, killing people and maiming people when they're, when they're wounded. That's, that's when they're dangerous and that's when uh, Brad would have used his 338. We were looking for a big bear, a 10 foot bear, and, and even though we were going to use a PSE bow and a, car, a beam and carbon arrow and a 125 grain thunderhead broadhead, uh, we wanted the biggest bear that, uh, that the area offered. And so we stalked and hunted and, and we uh, glassed and we, we spent all our time looking for the big bear. We passed up lots of small bears. We made some stalks on bears to practice to see what, what they do and, and hoping we wouldn't get charged. And some of the times uh, it was the most uh, unnerving, scary uh, situation you could possibly be in to be on these, in on these big, huge bears. But the big bears, the biggest ones, are further inland. They're in the salmon holes. They're, they've got the best uh, places to, to, uh, to feed on, and they keep those, those spots for themselves. So we had to get up before daylight and head upstream and, and uh, try and find a big bear. Uh, we looked for big tracks, tracks where they uh, sink in the, in the, the gravel that, that deep, and, and you'd walk on them, and, and you wouldn't even sink at all. But we. Uh, we spent a lot of time and, and uh, one afternoon, just, just as we were going to have lunch, uh, we got uh, our reward. Brad saw him first, uh, just a, a monster, a bear, came out of the alders right below us and uh, headed into the salmon stream, grabbed the salmon and right out, just as fast. There he is, Archie. Okay. And all I remember is Brad saying, Archie, there's your bear. There's your bear, go get him. And uh, I'm standing there looking at him and the bear's walking away back into the alders and, and uh, Brad said to me again, get your bow and get down there and get him. Get your bow and go down there. It didn't take long for me to get about 100 yards along the top of the hill and, and then it was straight down uh, to the creek bed and uh, through the alders, followed a little game trail, uh, dry leaves, a lot of noise. I had hip waders on and, and this jacket and uh, when I got down to the last little alder, uh, uh, 
I knew, I mean, this was going to be it. If he was there, I was going to either have a chance, a chance of, of a shot or a chance of, of maybe being charged. And all I had was my, my bow and, and uh, a quiver of arrows. Uh, there was lots of noise uh, as I came through the last alder and I looked to the side and there he was standing looking right at me and he was standing on his his back legs and you know 10 or 11 feet just looking right in my direction I didn't move I didn't breathe my heart was just pounding and I thought you know this is it he's gonna charge or he's gonna run and and, and uh, I just waited and I didn't move finally he he uh, he got down on all fours and he started coming forward. And he was inquisitive, he was nervous, uh, he knew that there was something going wrong and, and uh, uh, he knew that he'd heard something. He couldn't smell anything, the wind was right in my face. Uh, it was about that time that I realized that I couldn't see Brad and obviously he couldn't see me. And I was all alone with this monster 10 foot bear and nothing between us except a little creek and some gravel. My heart was just pounding and, and I, my knees were knocking and, and uh, I mean, uh, I just did nothing but stare at him. And finally he came forward and forward, he came to the edge of the creek, he was nervous, he was back and forth. His stomach told him he had to have another salmon. So into the creek he, he goes and, and then he's coming on an angle towards me. And I knew this is going to be it. I'm going to have, have a, a chance at him. And, and uh, he went behind uh, a little bit of a knoll that was in front of me and went underwater and I knocked one of my beam and arrows. And I remember looking at it and thinking, you know, is this going to do the trick on this big monster? He kept coming, quartering towards me, and when I figured he's going to go by and that's going to be my chance. Uh, he didn't. He turned, he headed back, and 
I had a perfect opportunity, a quartering away shot, and, uh, and all I remember was uh, uh, pick a spot, and I did. Archie, you got him. You got him. I don't believe it. Oh, Archie. <laughs> yes. stood there in awe. I, mean, I, I said thanks to my wife for letting me have this experience. Thanks to God for giving me the opportunity and, and for letting me be a hunter. And I thank Brad and, 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 and Brent. I mean, it was years of practice, uh, years of patience, uh, a lifelong dream, and uh, something to be truly thankful for. Okay, I came to here, and he was, he was feeding on the salmon just underneath the first big grayish alder. I made my way down here. You can just hear how dry the leaves are here. Everything's bloody roughly. I had to come underneath this with my bow and my hip quiver. I stopped because I was making so much racket coming through there, especially with these hip waders. But I stopped here with the, the leaves in front of me and the branches in front of me and waited for them. As soon as he touched the water, I took one step downward and then I was clear. I had an arrow knocked already and, and I waited right here until I got my chance for him to turn broadside and I drilled him right there. I'd say about 35, let's say about 35 yards. I just guessed it. I just took a wild guess. You probably know those distances better than I do, I don't. But that's a flat shooting bow <laughs> with that overdraw system. And it's, it's, it's about 95 pound pull now, so it sure hit that son of a gun hard, didn't it? Here. 35 on the nose. Dead on. Yep. I was absolutely dead on. I hit him first. Well, you can see he didn't go very far. He was actually about 37, maybe 37 to, to 40. about a half an hour and together we walked over and he was even bigger uh, as we got closer, even uh, more impressive, more massive, uh, more powerful. Uh, Brad estimated him at about 1,300 pounds and uh, well over 10 feet. Uh, his, his skull's just under 27 inches. He's in a class uh, with uh, 
Chucks and, and Fred's Bear and uh, at Wolfram Wide Bay and, and at 27 inches and a little bit less than 27 inches Pope and Young. I wouldn't want him to sit on me. <laughs> what do you think he weighs? Oh God, we haven't been able to roll him over yet, so I, I think he's about 12 to 1300 pounds. Could you right? Somewhere in there. Uh, who knows? I guess we may never know. We don't have a bathroom scale with us here. No, we'll never know. We can't even move him. It's hard. It's really hard to get to get him to move, even move his arms. Big old blueberry. Well, today's fish bear. Today's October the 11th, 1991. We're at Wide Bay on the Alaska Peninsula. We came in and on the 6th and started hunting on the 7th. This is our second tremendous trophy on a five-day hunt. Really, it's only yeah, it's five days that we've we've been hunting here on the peninsula. We took a tremendous real old massive Buna Crockett caribou which is probably on this tape. We also took this tremendous bear which you think is going to be about 10 feet? It'll go right at 10 foot maybe a little more who knows it's it's yeah fully mature about as big as they get on the Alaska Peninsula if it doesn't go 10 foot plus I'll be amazed. Yeah <laughs> and we know from looking at the skull Looking at the teeth, that he's probably real old. He's very old, probably 15 to 20. Yeah, 20 years old. Yeah. Which means he's going to have a good skull. And for Pope and Young of Boone and Crockett, which is what we're looking for in a, in a big trophy here, we're, we're hoping it's got about a 28 inch skull in. It should be 27 and a half plus. It might go as big as 28 and a half. We don't know. Yeah. We, we, this is something that... Uh, it takes about, what, 28 to get Boone and Crockett? 28 inches. To get Boone and Crockett. Length and width combined for Boone and Crockett. And uh, this one could just do it. It'll be the first one out of uh, our Wide Bay camp. And uh, the dog salmon camp that goes 28 inches. Yeah. Uh, I think it very easily could do it. Chuck Adams hunted here two years ago. Same bay. Not too far from here. It's a big, huge bay, but he uh, he took a, a ten foot six bear. Yeah, ten ten and a half, ten foot eight. It yeah. was a, a very large bodied bear. And it's. Do you remember what its skull was? I think it went twenty seven and three sixteenths or six sixteenths on the skull. Yeah. Which would put it number three in the Pope and Young book, and uh, it was an extremely large bear. I think it was a relatively young bear. Yeah. About ten or twelve years old, maybe. And he was guided by Brent Jones, our outfitter. Brent Jones and AAA Outfitters, AAA Alaska Outfitters, outfitted us on this trip and made this possible. Gave us the the opportunity to hunt together. We've we've corresponded since I hunted here two years ago. Brad and I have written back and forth for for two years. About every month, we exchanged letters, talk on the phone. We planned this. We we talked about. How exciting this was going, was going to be! You know, as a bow hunter, that your odds are 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 really really small of of, of taking a, a a hell of a trophy like this. Uh, even a even a, a less mature bear, a, a legal bear, is is uh, the odds are against you. We passed up legal bears to get this one. Yeah, we passed up a lot of legal bears. We had a huge dry sow the other night really close and 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 uh, a young boar really close that we played with and we played with them all we just made the decision that it was go for broke because we had the time and and the bears are here this area is really well managed the outfitters tremendous they're wonderful people and we knew we had what we needed to make this a successful hunt and get get the the trophy we wanted we passed up the the females, we passed up the ones that produce the, the bears, there's going to be bears, as long as a guy does that, there's going to be bears here for years and years and years. And these old boars, I mean, they're known to kill the cubs every year. 
Yeah, we've probably saved two or three cubs in, in the next year alone by and, taking this bear. And why do why do you think they kill the cubs? The, the large boars definitely kill the cubs to bring these sows into heat in the spring, usually, and to protect their territory. But usually, if a sow does not have cubs, she'll, she'll come into heat, and uh, the boar then has a, a sow to mate with, and that's what uh, lots of bears and humans and everything else are, are eating. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, they kill a lot of cubs. We found a number of cubs killed by boars just like this one. And didn't you say they could kill three-year-old bears too and stuff? They've killed, they can kill, this bear will kill anything up to a sow. I mean, she'll, this bear will kill a, a, a large sow in, in certain circumstances. Yeah, an eater. An eater. Yeah. Yeah, they kill up to three-year-old cubs very regularly. And you saw how talented they are getting these salmon. I mean, we can't even walk along the stream here without the salmon taking off and rushing upstream. And, and I mean, it took him seconds to get that. Yep. So here we are, Wide Bay. Fred Bear, Chuck Adams took monster bears here, and we took one too. And we hope ours is in a class like theirs. We think it is. We think we got a monster, and it's, it's a hell of a hunt. Yep. Thanks, great hunt. RJ. <laughs> great hunt. All right. Just a thrill of a lifetime for anybody that wants to come hunting in Alaska. They can come with Brad, or they can come with AAA. The story ended a couple of months later. Brad, who had all the talent in the world, uh, tremendous guy, tremendous outfitter, uh, bought his own Super Cub, and and it was so excited about his his year uh, ahead of him. And tragically, he was uh, killed in the Cub, uh, flying in the mountains near Anchorage. Just a, nothing I can say, but uh, a major loss to, to the whole hunting fraternity and to the, uh, the profession uh, in Alaska. Here's something to consider. Spring bear hunts occur when there is 20 hours of daylight. It makes for a comfortable, unpressured hunt. Ken Mowerson and his wife are in from New Jersey. They're after brown bear. Now, Ken hunted the Wide Bay area, the Wide Bay base camp, for about five days and saw over 20 bears, but he didn't see the bear he wanted. So they moved up to the Dog Salmon River camp. The Dog Salmon is probably the most dramatically beautiful place I know about. It was on the Dog Salmon drainage that Ken ran into a beauty. Ken Mowerson brought his wife Patty along as a non-hunter. They are based out of Wide Bay. Wide Bay has a nice run of Arctic char during the spring, and these folks knew all about catching fish and cooking them. Brent, Ken, and Dick spent the next day climbing high in search of a particular bear that Dick had spotted from camp. Careful glassing that day turned up nine other bears, but not the trophy Ken was looking for. Spring bears are constantly foraging on the mountainsides and beaches. Brent and Ken later passed up a brown bear that had found a dead sea otter in the surf. Brent decided to fly Ken up to the dog salmon camp and hunt an undisturbed area just east of camp. Ken Mowerson and guide Dick Koskovich spotted a good bear the next morning from a lookout 200 yards behind camp. Brent and Dick laid out a long but effective downwind stock.
way through the bushes. Go ahead and put a shell in. Get ready. There he is. Jeez, I'll tell you, that was something really exciting. I'll tell you, when we were standing down there on that ledge, when you got, when you pulled me up over that ledge, we're sitting there, and you said, "Here he comes, pull it in." I, I didn't know what I was going to do. I, we just got ready for it, and all of a sudden he busted out and came out down right here, out here on yeah, this right little there. ledge here, stood there, and he looked like a what a beautiful bear. The color on mm -hmm. this thing, and. Uh, I shot right then, and he ran up through here, and we shot a couple more times, and uh, he wound up going probably, ran about uh, 50, 60 yards, and yeah. that was about as far as he went, right? Huh? Yeah, at the most, about 50 yards. This Alaska brown bear hunt's been uh, probably an experience of a lifetime. Uh, it's To me, it's been a real high adventure coming up to this country and been, being able or being fortunate enough to be able to hunt this animal. Yeah, it just doesn't get any better than this. Of all the places on Earth, AAA's Dog Salmon Base Camp has to be one of the most scenic. Crystal clear rivers, snow-capped mountains, glaciers, and even a smoking volcano are visible from camp. The only way in here is by bush plane. Dr. Mike Irwin from Pennsylvania is loaded for bear. He's hunting with guide Paul Shervenak and Brent Jones. The Dog Salmon River Valley is full of brown bears that key on dog salmon, which fill these streams all summer. This dramatic valley is home to moose, caribou, and brown bear. The best way to locate a bear is to climb up to a high vantage, get comfortable, and glass, sometimes 10 to 12 hours a day. When you can see 20-some miles at a glance, it hardly pays to hike around in the alders where you can barely see 10 yards. About seven days into the hunt, they spotted a good bear from camp. He was high on the mountainside in the snow-covered alders. Three hours of climbing put them 75 yards downwind of the bear. Paul Shervenen and Mike Irwin kept the big boar in their sights waited for him to move out of the alders for a clear shot. A lot of things go through your mind when you finally got the drop on a big brown bear. The bear could get your scent and charge out there, or he may have a den in the alders and move back in. The most unnerving thing a bear can do at close range is to drop out of sight. When you're close to an Alaskan brown bear, you always want to know exactly where he is. Close range surprises with giant bears is bad news. This encounter is all unfolding within sight of the dog salmon base camp in the valley below. The opportunity for a clean shot may be brief. The tension builds with each second. The bear has moved only a few times in the last hour. Big bears like to bed in the snow for most of the day. Their winter coat is in full pelage and they often spend six to 10 hours in an alder patch without moving. Another sobering thought is that a brown bear can cover 75 yards in about seven seconds if he chooses to. Nice happy claws. What a bear! It's impossible to really appreciate the size of a big brown bear until you're close enough to touch one. And for most of us, that doesn't happen very often. One thing is certain, Mike Irwin will never forget this day. You really get a feel for big when you hang up the bear hide and it casts as much shade as an old oak tree. All adventures eventually draw to a close. The one thing different about a two-week hunt for brown bears on the Alaska Peninsula is that these memories won't blur with time.
Cold Bay, Alaska is located 200 miles southwest of Wide Bay on the Alaska Peninsula. This mountainous region boasts some of the worst weather and biggest brown bears in the world. West Virginia hunter Dr. Dave Gandy is here to hunt with bear guides Roger Morris and Dan Swatzer. Here's Dr. Dave Gandy with the story of his Cold Bay brown bear hunt. As the hunt progressed, it was absolutely miserable for 18 to 22 days. And it wasn't until actually on the last day of the hunt that um, we had spotted the bear on the second day and uh, we were able to track them that night and, uh, or that morning and followed their tracks and was able to come down and see where the, we thought that the bear were bedded down. So when we got to the spot, we set up on the other side and we glassed for, oh, about three and a half hours that morning. And uh, about noontime, we decided to take a break and uh, we were all eating and then John just happened to pick up his binoculars while all of us and he just saw the bear just the sow just raise up in the altar and she just went right back down and at that point we knew that the the bears that I'd spotted on the second day was the same bears and that's where they were so at that point we immediately picked up stuff and John who was filming everything for me we went up the creek to the right because of the wind and as soon as we got up and come over top of the rise then the wind was blowing right smack down through that alder thicket where they were bedded so that was about a mile and a half so we went back down where we started went back down um, another mile and a half below then went up a big crevice and went up and of course we were all completely exhausted, wore out, and we come right up, and then Roger come up over a little crevasse and there was snow. Roger showed me, or told me that the bears were in the altar, so immediately we got into a position where we thought that I would have a good shot if the bears came out of this thicket. So as we were sitting there, it took about three and a half hours and during that period of time, we kept waiting for the bears, waiting for the bears, but they didn't come out. So we gave them as long as possible, and this was the last day of the hunt. So we had Dan to go up and circle and come back down and come through the alder. And as he came down through the alder, the bear broke out. There's the bear right there. Come out of them bushes. Come on, come on, where are you, where are you, where are you? Come on, where are you? Oh, shoot, he's way over here now. One shot. There he's coming up the hill. Come on, hit him. There, he busted him. Good. Good shot. Good, good. Busted him. Okay. Dave has just scored. Okay, let's get on over here. Dave, good shot, buddy. Good. Good shot, you got him. I'm a little shaky now. Hands, hands and feet are cold. Boy, oh boy, busted him. All right. Way to go, way to go, Dave. Way to go. 18 days of rain and baby, we finally got him. <laughs> All right, seven days after this one bear. You better believe it. All right, congratulations, man. Good shot. Thank you. You done him in. What a bear. Up there. Oh, you. Look at that. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Roger. Monster. It is a monster. It's over 10, 2 or 3. Looks like he's going to, I'm sure the skull's going to do it. 
The skull's it. gonna do it. Look at the size of that head. You did a great shot. That was a, you see the blood on this other side here? Yeah. You see when, when he hit this thing, he just goes, whap, that's it. No movement, no anything. What? You didn't hit him first shot then? It was, no, he was running. It was the second shot or third shot? Third shot, I think. Oh, you're shot. shooting. When you we heard each of you shoot like three times a piece. No, I shot once. Shot. He shot. He shot three times, and as soon as it went down, then I shot. I probably missed it. Anyway, it was down, and I didn't want it coming back up. But it was dead on the right. All right. Thank you again, Mr. Morse, Robert, Van. Sir. I can't thank you enough. And John, <laughs> you bet. You've been a peach, bud. Thanks, man. Because you were the one that spotted it in the alders today. All right. And, and if, it's, it's just everything I ever hoped for. Well, tell me, tell me, Dave, is it is it worth waiting on for the eleventh hour? It's worth definitely uh, waiting. Another week of this rain. <laughs> you! Unbelievable. I mean, it was just... I can't explain it. it. It was the bear of a lifetime. It. There was no doubt in my mind that this was a 10-foot bear, and there was no doubt in my mind before. I mean, it was just... It was big. So it was just... <laughs> it was a, a dream come true. I mean, it was just that simple. A dream come, come true. And I had the biggest bear and the most perfect pelt and the only person I've got to thank is the good Lord above. This camp is an oasis in the wilderness. A super cub is kept in camp to ferry hunters out to spike camps. Alaska is no place for toy tents. To be out here and have your tent collapse could lead to a disaster. Spike camp tents are the best money can buy. Mountaintop landings and takeoffs are a real rush. This next hunter, Ali Ustav, is from Istanbul, Turkey. He's hunting out of western Alaska, AAA's base camp out there near Otter Lake. Now he's seen over six bears in the first four days of his hunt, but he's still looking for that big one. But first I want you to watch this encounter that he had with a big gray bear eating berries. Imagine being there yourself and what it would feel like. Watch this.
Wally, good shooting, bud. That Thanks was a, a perfect stock and a wonderful Thank shot. You. Just broke them down instantly. It was okay. yeah, it was fantastic, just just like it's supposed to be. Just perfect. <laughs> the toughest part was deciding which one of the two bears to go after. Uh, yeah, yeah. And there on that, just in, above the alders right there is, uh, I think that's amazing. Most people haven't seen an Alaska brown bear, mm -hmm. and to be stalking one and have another one just uh, 200 yards away, 300 yards away, and never even saw us as we moved up along the alders. That would have been very easy to get two bears for two hunters on that one. <laughs> probably, <laughs> probably could have done it. Yeah, yeah, that works That's the kind of problems I would like to have. <laughs> Everybody would like to have to problems choose like which that. Bear to shoot. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, he was really chomp chomping down on his berries, you know, and. That's kind of uh, makes it, I think, an easy stock. And this time of the year, when they all come out, they, they've been eating a lot of salmon, and uh, it, it, the berries are sweet, so they're up here, and they just get real preoccupied and just uh, eat all day long. I mean, you know, and we've got uh, a couple more weeks before the snows come, and uh, I, I think, again, that hunting the bears when they're in the berries seems to... Uh, be about the easiest that you can do, even easier than when they're on the salmon, because salmon streams are usually kind of thick and with vegetation and everything. Out here, it's just flat, open. That's why the area is such a, a, a neat area, and why uh, a lot of the areas here in Alaska is the same way. Uh, when you have the berries in September, mid-September, the bears are going to be there. What was it like uh, during the stock when you were out slipping up on them? It, well, it, for this time of the year and everything, we had. We had the wind in our favor. Of course, it was a little wet, crawling around, and uh, in everything has been, it's been raining all day and everything. But it still was it was the the type of stock that uh, you would want to do. You we we stayed by the alder, so to kind of keep away from them. Uh, we used the little hummocks there to kind of get behind and everything. And at a few times, you know, he'd raise up, and of course, that's when you stop. You know, I mean, you you know, you're already little camo, different type camos. Didn't matter what you're using in the camo here because we got so many different colors in here. He but kept still, going behind that bush too. Right, and right. And when, yeah, and right when behind get, that. And then, then you move in. You know, you you try to pick your times when you're when you're moving on these guys. As long as they're feeding, and again, we're back to the berries. As long as they got their heads down eating, uh -huh. you're fine. But as soon as he raises his head up, stop. Down. We were, of course we were flat on our bellies. You know, so right. One of those little uh, type deals. I could see that from my vantage up higher with the camera looking down, I could see you clearly all the time, but you were very close to me. You were actually 108 yards from the bear when mm -hmm. you shot. It's mm -hmm. 108 yards. I know looking in the lens with a telephoto, it kind of sucked him yeah, in to look right. like you were about 60 or 70 yards away. But mm -hmm. It was 108 yards, but I could tell that when the bear was looking, when he would come up and look around, and you see how he popped his head up a couple I times? I wonder if he wasn't smelling that other bear across the valley. Right. Yeah, there there's something. But he, I'm but, sure he was. Yeah. But looking back now, that direction where you were coming from, the little hummocks and everything, you know, there's plenty of contour there to hide. And going slow, I think that had a, that played a part. That was a long stock, actually, from initially sighting them when we were. Oh yeah. How far? How far away were we? We're talking we? a couple a couple hours stock. Right. Is what it was really. actually. And and you know, and that's the thing. A lot of people don't do. And whether we've got guides or whatever, you see one way off, you know, and well, these too far or no, we don't go. Hey, there's really if the time if you have the time, there's no too far off. You know, you always. Right. You, you make that decision. Uh -huh. If it's dark, you know, you can't do things, but if it's not, uh, go for it. And uh, that's what we did. Wait, well, to you it looked like 40 yards, you know, we were taking the camera, but uh, to us we were talking about it and it looked like 150 to me. 150 Because, yeah. of, the, because of the fog and the mist. It I, is very difficult you place it open it terrain, was, uh, too. I, I asked him before he shot, which is uh -huh. what I did this the first time. I like to see what the hunter thinks, uh -huh. whether I think it's the same or not. Right. I would have figured it was around 100 yards. I asked all like what he thought and he said 150 and I said, that's fine. You feel comfortable with that, but you aim right in the center. Right. Just the center. Right. You're fine. Your gun is fine. Whether it's 150 or 100, we knew we were in there. Uh -huh. It was all fun. And you were. And that was yeah. wonderful. That Thank was you. just, that was the most exciting thing I've been in on. Thank just you. worked out great. For a long time. Just great. Good deal. A brown bear's weight varies throughout the year. They weigh considerably less in the spring. All summer they gain weight and by early fall are hog fat just prior to denning. During the fall, most males weigh four to 900 pounds, with the biggest boars reaching 1,400 pounds. Sows weigh about one half to three fourths as much. 
Large males will stand over nine feet tall while standing on their hind legs. At some point in the fall, the bears switch to blueberries. They may spend 15 hours a day feeding on the sweet berries while they are plentiful. Is a Pennsylvania bow hunter doing on South Kodiak chasing brown bears with a bow? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've uh, I had some friends that had rifle hunted brown bear, and their stories were just incredible. I mean, it's something that really uh, gets your blood pumping, and it's something that you know I'd always admired these guys for you know their outdoor savvy. And I just thought, you know, I, I've been bow hunting since I can remember, and uh, always wanted to try it. I figured, you know, these guys did it with a rifle, and I talked to them, and they said it, they were close to some brown bears, so I figured I'd like to give it a shot with a bow. How many bears did you see down there? Uh, in six days, I seen 43 bears, and I was... Oh, is totally, that a lot of bears? Yeah, I was amazed. I, you know, you go on a hunt somewhere, and you're, you're hoping to see one of the animal that you're, you know, that you're after. And to see 43 brown bears is, was unbelievable. They're, they're just tremendous. Yeah. Kodiak has so many more bears than people would believe. So there's a bear per square mile there, approximately. And uh, it's just uh, covered up with brown bears. And I've been right down there where you were hunting, near Olga Bay, near the old cannery, yeah. Pinell and Tellison's Olga Bay cannery. And uh, you know, those are two of the most well-known, famous bear guides that'll ever be. You know, they just moved out of there right before you got there, I hear. I've read about them, but unfortunately, I, I never got to meet them. Yeah, but you took a bear right down there in their backyard, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. 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 That, was, uh, that was a hunt of a lifetime. It's just... So how did that hunt unfold? How did your hunt unfold? Well, uh, on the sixth day, we were uh, sitting on the side of a mountain above our tent, uh, glassing the, as much area as we could. And uh, oh, approximately two to three miles away, we watched two bears out on the flats, they were feeding. There were some small streams that had, you know, run through these flats, and they were just, you know, there were salmon in them, and they were walking along the streams looking for lunch. And uh, we watched the one bear bed down, and my guide checked it out through the spotting scope and thought that, you know, it was a, it was a good, good bear, and he, we were going to take a walk down and get a closer look at it. Who was your guide? Uh, Greg Accord. He was working for... Uh, Scott Malore at the huh. time he was he was helping Scott out. There's definitely some uh, something to be said about getting real close to brown bears. Whether you're holding a gun or nothing or a bow, whatever you're doing, if you're photographing them, you know there's a point. There's a point, and every bear has a different point, and every bear has a different day too when this might happen. But there's a point when <laughs> the whole thing will just avalanche on you, you know, because brown bears don't always put up with people next to them. Yeah, I I had thought about that. Uh, when I made the arrangements for the hunt, you know, how was I going to react uh, being this close to an animal that I'd never seen before? Uh -huh. And uh, I just mentally prepared myself, and uh, I just hoped that I could follow through when it when it came time. Uh -huh. So how did it unfold? When you got down to the uh, point where uh, I understand your guide uh, moved in a little ways and and uh, was keeping an eye on the bear. Yes, yes. He uh, he set up on the little ridge where he could basically oversee me as I made the stalk. And um, Greg, which was my guide, he he watched through the we watched everything unfold through his uh, rifle scope. And my uh, packer Kim, he did the video uh -huh. taping, and it, it worked out pretty well. So as you moved in, did it was it like it took you 15 minutes to get there, or what? Uh, it, it seemed like 15 minutes to me, but I found out later it took uh, close to two hours. Uh, we just it was con I was on my hands and knees in, and my belly, just crawling toward the bear. I could see it uh, the majority of the time. I could just you know catch pieces of it. The bear was you know just taking a rest there, but uh, the wind was two in hours my to go. How far? Uh, 
150, 200 yards. It wasn't very wow. far at all. It, it, <laughs> it was a, it was a long, <laughs> it was a long 200 yards. <laughs> what kind of things go through your mind as you're moving in? I uh, my biggest concern at, at 200 yards is, uh, am I going to be able to get close to the bear? You know, am I going to get a shot, or is it going to get up and wander off? And as the distance closed, you kind of start to think of different things. <laughs> Like, do I really want to do this? Uh, I knew that I, I was going to follow through with it, and I just, uh, as the distance closed, your your concentration gets so intense that you just uh, you pay attention to every move you make, every piece of grass that you bend over, uh, and how quiet you are, what the wind's doing, and uh, when you get really close, it, it it's really intense. Now, there's nothing between you and that bear, basically. That's like coming across a golf course, sneaking up on a, across a golf course almost. Yes, yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> so when, when you finally did get into, uh, you were on final, you know, you were right there, you were under 40 yards, and, you know, I know you're an IBO shooter and stuff, and even that's even that may be far for a brown bear, I know you've hit things, you can hit a target 40 yards pretty consistently. So what, when you got under, when you got close, what, what, what uh, How'd you feel? You know, what what did it feel like to be that close and know that it was probably going to happen? It it is uh, the most incredible feeling. It's really hard to describe. It's just something that you. I mean, I love to hunt, and when you get that close to to achieving one of your goals, it's just like, you know, this is it. This is the countdown. You know, is everything going to follow through like I've planned? You know, that hunt went through my mind a million times, and it was, is it going to follow? Th the path that I'd uh, that I'd dream. Uh, it's it's a rush. It's uh, like I said. It, it's difficult to describe. So what happened? I, what happened when you got 30 yards? Uh, 30 yards uh, from the bear, I decided I was definitely close enough. And when I stood up, I I really expected the bear to stand up. Uh, so I, I eased myself up and and I looked and the bear was looking the other way. And I said, well. I'm going to steal a couple more feet here. So I uh, slowly edged in, and uh, it, at 20 yards, the bear had uh, just turned its head and seen me, and it started to stand up, and I just knelt down on one knee, and I could not believe how big this animal was. It, you know, it was like the thought that went through my mind was, this thing looks like a train. I mean, it is just so wide. and. Uh, I drew my bow. I didn't want to shoot it in the front, but I figured if the bear had charged, uh, you know, at least I would have some hope. <laughs> so uh, at that point, the, the bear had turned to its right. It quartered away like it was going to walk away from me. And uh, I let the first arrow fly. It entered the, uh, the ribs right behind the, the left side of the bear, and the arrow went the whole way through the bear. I was. I was amazed. I mean, I could see just the, the arrow was hanging on by the fletching, and, and the bear had made a couple bounds for me. And at that point, I looked down and realized that I got to get another arrow in. And I was I was nervous. I was shaking a little bit. Uh, and I got an arrow knocked, and I uh, looked up, and the bear had stopped. I drew, released, and the second arrow had hit the bear in the spine. And uh, it it's the back end of the bear kind of hit the ground. And it started to run again, and I started to run after it. I don't know if that was too bright, but that was... <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> yeah, it was, I, I went with the uh, first instinct. And uh, I actually got another shot off at the bear, but didn't connect. Uh-huh. And uh, So when this was happening, and it was all melting down right there, uh, did, you, were, you were covered by your guide, though. Yes, yes. He was, uh, like I said earlier, he was on a little knoll overseeing uh -huh. everything. And I didn't find out till later that uh, when I'd completed my stalk and stood up, I had stood up directly in the line of fire between the bear and my guide. And uh, <laughs> later he had told me, he said, Rick, if I'd had to shoot, he said, I had to shoot you first to get you out of the way. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it was... Uh, well, how, how far did the bear go after that? I'll tell you what, it, maybe 150 yards. And uh, it made it over a little, little rise and... Uh, after it made the rise, probably 10, 15 seconds, it was it, it was down. down. It was down oh, for good. good. And talk about a happy camper! <laughs> <laughs> wow, yeah, that's an incredible hunt. You know, just incredible. So, uh, 
you know, I'm, not, I'm sure there are a lot of bow hunters out there that are wondering, so what, what, what do you use? Uh, what's a good setup to go hunt a Kodiak brown bear? You know, what was, what was your Well, I'll tell you setup. what, my personal preference was the, uh, the PSE. Uh, it's an LD280, and uh, I had the bow set at 80 pounds draw weight, and it proved to be more than sufficient. Uh, uh -huh. Like I said, the first arrow was a pass-through. Um, I was using the uh, Thunderhead 125s and uh, I couldn't say enough about them. I, that was the business end of the arrow. Mm -hmm. And uh, Easton 2514s uh, did a real, it did a real good job. Uh -huh. I, I, was, I was very happy with the performance of my equipment. And I, I use a uh, wind release, and, but I don't use sights. It's kind of an odd combination, but uh, it works for me. And uh, so I'm an instinctive shooter with the release. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, it worked there. I can't yeah. argue. It's no, no, no room to argue that, <laughs> is there really? So uh, when you got up to the bear and there you were and he was, what would you think? I was, again, I, I was just totally amazed by the size of this animal. Uh, it, it, it was incredible. Uh, their fur is just is fabulous. Uh, the size of this bear's head is unbelievable. Uh, I'm glad that... Uh, you know, I won this uh, <laughs> little challenge. It was uh, something. I had, trying to pick the bear's head up for a picture, I, <laughs> I had a heck of a time just pulling its head up off the tundra. It was amazing. Rick Bojo, a Pennsylvania bow hunter with a dream. Even better, a dream come true. Less than 40 bow hunters have entered a brown bear into the Pope and Young record book. When Rick shot this bear, it was number nine in the world. Hey Dakota, what that got? Finally. Let's see the white claws. Yeah. Look up in these pads, Lord. Forty miles further down the peninsula from Wide Bay, Foster Bud is guiding hunters Doug Baker and Mike Couch. They are hunting out of a remote spike camp in a wide valley above the North Pacific. The Tennessee hunters are on their first hunt in Alaska, and they can't believe how many bears these mountains hold. To say that these tracks are hot is an understatement. Doug took up the trail but ran into another bear in the next drainage. This brown boar is probably prospecting drainages for receptive sows. Some bears cover 15 or more miles a day.
Doug is angling across these snowy alders on an intercept course. Out of there, mate. Son, you made a heck of a shot on that bear. <laughs> Folks, you just don't know how hard we have hurt with this bear. Foster and Doug passed up 12 brown bears before letting the hammer down on this blonde bear. You made a heck of a shot, so. <laughs> Alaska's brown bear men sure are a unique group of adventurers, aren't they? And those brown bears in Alaska are just, just a lot of fun. And you know, it's, the good news is they're going to be there for a long time. You know, the Alaska Department of Fish and Game intensely manages brown bears, and there are as many there today as there were 50 or 60 years ago. I know you're sitting there just thinking about going to Alaska. You ought to just get up and book a hunt. See you in Alaska.